The uh, Urban Rural Exchange is uh, hosted by the Iron Dog uh, Snow Machine Race and the whole concept is let's bring all Alaskans together and so we have two schools that uh, put five person teams together and then teachers chaperone them across Alaska uh, following the race. So what did you expect when coming to Barrel? Cold, dark, short days. <laughs> Wait, what? Really? Go over here. What? Okay. Many people don't know much about Barrel. The first thing that comes to mind is how cold the weather is and how expensive the groceries are. Both are true. However, Barrow is a town that many people come to love just by visiting. The people there are kind and relaxed, and there's a great community feel. It's really peaceful. There's a lot of nice people here. <laughs> Met new friends. Uh, today we're doing a career fair for the Northern Slope School District. We're just going over the different opportunities for careers and education that the National Guard can have, as well as there's other vendors here as well that are telling them what education and career fields that they can go into. One major difference between urban and rural environments is the communities. During our time in Barrow, many surrounding nearby towns visited for a basketball tournament and a career expo. People from around Barrow came and watched the games and then conversed with the visitors. During the visitors' stay, they slept, ate, and lived inside the school facilities. The biggest difference I've noticed, at least in the school, is a lot of the rules are more relaxed. Like you're allowed to wear hats in school and stuff like that. Unrealistically, there were a lot of uh, cultural barriers to overcome as somebody who was not from that area. For example, a lot of the time I would ask my students a question, they would not answer me. They would give me an eyebrow raise like this, or they would kind of crunch up their their nose if I was asking them a question. I went to a cultural training about a week later, found out it's very disrespectful in the Siberian Yupik culture to look an elder in the eye uh, and give them an answer, uh, saying yes or no, looking them in the eye. So they would not look at me, they would give me an eyebrow raise for a yes, and they would kind of scrunch up their face for a no. Quite simply, first, um, the school calendar is not, not always set up for rural Alaska subsistence activities. So a good example is the fishing industry. Um, where I'm from, a good quarter of the boys won't make it to school first day of school because they're still fishing. The fisheries is still open. And then second is, um, unfortunately, rural Alaska has a high teacher turnover. So those students that live out there don't get the benefit of an experienced teacher staying there year after year, building that institutional knowledge.
school and had a regular school day with us. My favorite part of the exchange was facing the students around my school. educational history in Alaska, um, the, the native youth in villages were taken out of their villages and put into boarding schools. I think the thought behind that is kind of a better education, um, not sustainable, there weren't sustainable schools out in these villages, there wasn't enough staff to staff these, these schools, and so they were put into boarding schools, and there was a, a case, um, the Molly Hooch case is what it was what it's referenced as, and they actually were then able to have pub publicize their school systems in, in rural Alaska, now bringing in sometimes teachers from outside other the lower 48 different states and then some teachers from the native villages, of course, with, with the proper teaching credentials. They can go in and get a college degree and teach out there as well. From an educational value, uh, the exchange uh, comes to the core of Alaska. We can teach in class geography and we can pin locations. Where is Barrow? Where's Tanana? Where's Uniclete? But uh, repeatedly we find students don't learn uh, just by pinning the donkey on the map. And so by taking them and living it, uh, it becomes lifelong learning to them. So it's the experiential learning uh, that is last long, uh, lasts for the rest of their life. I think one of the biggest values is uh, getting out of Barrow and seeing and experiencing other things outside of the school. I mean, experiences they can always cherish and remember. We, we used to um, send students with a rural exchange and it was a lot more prevalent than it is now. It's absolutely beneficial for students to go out and experience a point of view that quite frankly they won't get living in, in Anchorage. My favorite part about the student exchange is just being able to get out of Anchorage and see what's see what's out there for people in the North Slope. And um, it allowed me to explore and meet new people that I haven't met before. I actually got to meet a uh, family that I never knew, so that was pretty cool. The remnants on top, and then the flippers themselves created their own oil. It's not pre pretty easy like in English because we hunt for our food. Most people like to go ski to a, most people don't like to stay inside and get warm because it's like negative 45 degrees out. The uh, Urban Rural Exchange is uh, hosted by the Iron Dog uh, Snow Machine Race and the whole concept is let's bring all Alaskans together and so we have put t five person teams together and then teachers chaperone them across Alaska uh, following the race and they're basically the pit crew uh, assisting the Iron Dog to set it, uh, the race up, uh, tear down the start and finish and then in engage in learning about each other's communities in the state. So uh, annually the uh, Iron Dog uh, gathers sponsors to uh, finance the uh, whole exchange. Uh, everything from the airfare to the lodging to feeding uh, the teams and then they help coordinate the connection between the, the two teams with the actual race itself. So um, they're 
they're leaving it, uh, the whole program, financing the whole project, and then uh, in, engulfing the students into the uh, race itself.